Hello, I'm Sophie Scott. Welcome to Health Watch. Whether you're young or old, doesn't matter. The advice is to get a free flu jab. Up to 5 million people are being encouraged to roll up their sleeves. The jab will protect them against swine flu and other strains of the influenza virus. James Wilkinson doesn't look like someone who's at risk of complications from the flu, but because he has diabetes, he is. For the first time, people with serious health problems and pregnant women can get the flu vaccine for free. People under the age of 65 who have heart disease, lung disease, including severe asthma, uh, kidney disease, diabetes, or people whose immune system is suppressed for any reason, uh, indigenous population, all those over the age of 15 years. What influenza can do is to destabilise their condition, and it can destabilise it very quickly and very severely. Doctors told pregnant mother Melinda Hicken that she should also get the jab. With my asthma, my three-year-old son who attends childcare two days a week and my pregnancy now, um, that I should definitely be vaccinated. While many people over 65 get their flu shot, many younger people with chronic health problems have avoided it. This year the vaccine will protect against swine flu as well as common strains of influenza. But people who've already had the swine flu vaccine still need to get the seasonal flu shot. There is a, an influenza, an A. Perth strain out there, which is, belongs to the family which actually has its greatest impact in older people. Uh, the swine flu, as you've seen last year at least, had its greatest impact in younger people. So we may well have a season where we've got two viruses affecting largely different groups in the population. Getting a flu vaccine reduces hospitalisations and complications from the virus. Australian researchers have developed a prototype for a bionic eye. They hope to begin clinical trials within three years, but it's likely to be a decade before it's widely available. For Leeton Boyd, life without clear vision is something he's had to get used to. At the age of five, he was diagnosed with retinous pigmentosa, a degenerative eye condition. He's looking forward to the prospect of being able to see again. A bionic eye is, just, is going to be just a, a special thing and it's been a long time coming. Prime Minister Kevin Rudd's 2020 summit was the impetus for the bionic eye and his vision could give new hope to nearly 50,000 people in Australia who suffer from vision loss. Professor Anthony Burkett, Director of Bionic Vision Australia, says this prototype will offer patients greater clarity compared to other models on the market. It really is sort of a quantum leap in the technology, both in terms of the materials that we're using and in terms of the, um, the data and power transmission that's involved in it. The patient wears these glasses which have a camera attached to them. Those images are then transmitted by high frequency radio waves to a microchip implanted in the retina. And this is the result, a dotted image which gives the outline of an object. Clinical trials in patients will start in 2013 and if successful Successful, bionic eye could be available by 2020. Kevin Murphitt lost his sight to a shattered windscreen. He's hoping he'll one day be able to see his loved ones again. The beauty of, you know, vision is really, really uh, dear to me and to be able to see my family again, uh, those sorts of things I think would be just remarkable. It's hoped the bionic eye will do for blind people what the cochlea implant did for the deaf. And it seems that eating chocolate might be good for you. New German research shows that eating small amounts of chocolate every day, particularly dark chocolate, can decrease blood pressure and the risk of heart disease. So with Easter coming up, dig in, in moderation of course. That's all for now. See you next week.